welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new if you are hi my name's Hermione and today I'm going to be sharing some DIY IKEA hacks with you if you're watching this from around the time that it comes out I've got a quick little disclaimer for you but if you're watching from the future feel free to skip it but just let me know in the comments how 2021 is going please and thank you let's have some good news Okay, onto that quick disclaimer. Before the lockdown, I filmed two IKEA hack videos that I was gonna put up, but obviously everything happened and then I just couldn't bring myself to post them because I thought they weren't relevant. You can't get to IKEA, what's the point? Then I asked you in a video if you still wanted to see them and you said yes and I didn't know what to do. So I reviewed the footage and I cut them down into one video and included mainly the DIYs that I think you could make using items from around your house. And then one more that I just couldn't cut because I really liked it. Sorry. With that being said, let's jump in and I'm gonna talk you through some of these DIYs and try not to mispronounce Swedish words again. Let's go. <laughs> this DIY is a bit of a fun one. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever wanted wall sconces but not wanted to get an electrician involved? This one's a really easy rental hack and it's budget friendly because I'm using battery powered lights. Let me show you what in the world I did with them. The most important part of this project is this Blavik light. It's £4.50, it's battery powered and you'll also need a plastic plant pot. This one's 50p and with this light it can actually be used as a desk lamp or mounted on the wall because it has self-adhesive stickers on the bottom so the first thing that i'm going to do is cover up the light portion with some washi tape or you can use masking tape because i'm going to take this outside and spray paint it the same thing goes for the plastic flower pot but first we need to cut a hole in the top so I drew the outline of where the lamp is gonna go. You're gonna wanna cut this a little bit bigger so it can slide in. This was very difficult to cut, but that's because my craft knife was from Poundland. There's a tip, don't use craft knives from Poundland, use a real one. I just didn't have one, so I may do, but that's why it's a bit jaggedy around the edges. So you can go around and sand the edges if you do have the same problem, but please try and use a good craft knife. <laughs> anyway, once you've got the hole created, you can take them both outside and spray paint them. I like spray painting things in a cardboard box, so less of the spray paint goes everywhere, which is something I've managed to do quite a few times. So I'm just using a black, it's a matte black, so I thought that was quite like modern looking. And then when that was done, I was able to peel off the tape and uncover the light again. As you can see, I missed a little bit on the back, but I did go back in and top that up with spray paint. To fix the pot to the lamp, I'm using hot glue because I just feel like it dries so quickly and it's so easy to use. And there is no heat coming off of this lamp because it's an LED, so it's not gonna warm up the glue, but you can use any kind of glue that you think will work well. And ta-da, we have a lamp. The lamp has a suction cup and 3M stickers on the back so you can easily adhere it to the wall with no problems and then all you have to do is press the button and it will turn the light on. I've used this in my kitchen to illuminate my coffee machine and I think it works really well. I've actually bought a few more to see if I can try and make some gold ones for my bedroom. That DIY only cost me five pounds and some spray paint, which I think is such a bargain. It's renter friendly, removable, and no electrician required. Moving on, this next DIY is one that I made with the Smara baskets. Now these are new baskets that I really love. They've got this kind of woven cane detailing, which is really on trend at the moment. And I want to show you a few different ways to do things with them. So I did make a jewelry box in my last Ikea hack. And then this one, I wanna do something a bit different. So I tried to make a hanging basket for my kitchen, but you can use this anywhere in your house. So let's jump in and I'll show you what I did. This is the basket that I'm using for this project. They come in a lot of different sizes, but this one has the same top and bottom piece and you can use whichever one you want. So I'm starting with some rope and I'm folding it in half and we've got four pieces here and then tying a knot in the top. This is going to help attach the basket to the ceiling. You wanna make sure to tie that knot really tightly so it's not gonna go anywhere and then cut all of the excess pieces at the bottom. 
Once you've done that, you can lay out your rope and put one piece on each corner of the basket like so, kind of like an octopus, but with only four arms. I don't know where I'm going with this. I started by trying to push the rope through with some scissors, but that was painfully tedious and it just made a mess. So I had another idea in a minute that I will show you. But um, as you can see, I'm just creating a knot, tying it tightly and pulling the rope through. To make it easier to thread the rope, I started using some of my old washi tape again and then just tied that around the end of the rope to stop it from fraying and make it a lot smaller, kind of like a shoelace. And then I threaded it through from the outside going to the inside. Then I was able to once again tie a knot and hide this on the inside of the basket. When that was done, I took the second basket and four more pieces of rope and I did a very similar thing with these ones, but instead of tying them in a knot at the top, I attached all four pieces to the top basket and once again tied more knots, making sure that it was very secure and it wasn't going to go anywhere. As you can see, I'm trying to make sure that the height is the same on all sides of the basket before tying my knots so that it's not wonky when I lift it up right at the very end, which is exactly something that would happen to me if I wasn't careful. So this is kind of how it's turning out. And then once you've finished all four of the sides, you can hang it up and use it anywhere in your house. This would be really nice in a bathroom with some like trailing plants in planters or something. You don't want to overload it because the basket's quite um, delicate, but it makes for a really nice storage if you're gonna use some light objects in it. That DIY was so simple and it only cost me eight pounds plus a little bit of rope that I already had lying around my house. So this next DIY is a really cute little table and originally I wanted to use all IKEA products but I had a few setbacks including some kitchen roll holders that we just don't want to talk about. Wasn't a fun time. In the end I ended up improvising which worked out for the best and you know what improvisation is key if you're making any of these DIYs and you can't get to IKEA, improvise. So let me show you what I did anyway. This is a Lazy Susan that you can get in Ikea. They're really inexpensive and it makes for a really nice round tabletop. It's hard to find wood rounds cut to size in the UK. I just can't find them anywhere. So I thought I would use this and attach some legs. <laughs> These are vintage furniture legs that I found on an old table I used to have. I got rid of the tabletop, but I kept the legs for a project like this. And I'm gonna attach them to the bottom of this piece. Originally I wanted the legs to be on this centerpiece here so the table could spin but I have no use for a spinning table really and I think it might make it look a little bit top heavy so it could fall over so we'll probably put them here. First things first we're going to spray paint these and see how they turn out. So I took the legs outside and spray painted them. For some reason, I forgot to prime them, which just made this a whole lot more difficult because I had to do about five layers of spray paint. So do remember to prime them. I'm using this metallic gold from Rust-Oleum, which I absolutely love. The year is 2033. I had to get another can of spray paint. We had many rainy days in between, but I finally got these done. It's been about five days, but they're nice and gold now. So let's make this happen. I wanted to make sure I was attaching the legs equal distances from each other on the bottom of the table. So I drew a cross in the middle and then measured out from the center of the spinning device to make sure I was adding all of the um, leg pieces to the right place. Leg pieces, plates, I'm not exactly sure what they're called. I think they're the plates for the legs. I also spray painted these so that they match and um, as you see I'm just screwing them in and then the legs screw into the plates. So if you are out looking at charity shops or secondhand shops do take a look for small side tables with interesting legs. They can be quite inexpensive and you can use the legs for any other project that you might have in mind. Also you can check Etsy and eBay for old legs like this as well. This is the final result. That was a fun little hack and it makes for a cute side table. So if you see one of those Lazy Susans, pick them up because you can do so many different things with them. This next hack is so simple, I almost cut it from the video, but then I thought that it could be something that you could do with things that you might have lying around your house. So I wanted to show you a very simple way that I jazzed up this little tray that I got from Ikea. 
To add a little bit of height to this tray, we're using these large wooden rounds. They're a bit like wooden beads, but I believe they're called doll heads. I've had these lying around for ages and they make for great feet on the bottom of small tables and little trays and things like that. So I'm fixing these to the bottom of the tray using some wood glue and then allowing them to dry for a few hours before flipping it over. I'm using quite a lot of wood glue to make sure that they're not going to go anywhere. You could paint or stain these beforehand if you wanted to, but I really love the natural wood colour. So I just did that and all you have to do is push them evenly into the corners of the tray and let them dry. It's so, so simple. You could use any kind of small object for this, like wooden blocks, or if you don't have these flat bottomed ones, if you've got some large beads, you might be able to try and make them work. I don't know, just have, have fun with this and see what you can make. And uh, this is how it looks and it makes for a nice little tray on my, um, my makeup table. And with that, that wraps up my DIYs and simple hacks for today's IKEA video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're all staying safe and staying inside. And if you are doing any DIY projects or you're doing anything to take your mind off of things, please let me know in the comments down below what you've been doing. I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Happy hacking and I'll see you next time. Bye.